Okay, so um, basically where I want to start is today's Technology PD is focused on Google Sheets. Um, what we, I plan on covering today is the following, but I'll be adding a lot of tips and tricks in there um, as well as we go along. And if you guys have better ways, please let me know and we can kind of like add those in as well. So basically our goals today is we're going to learn how to merge, add, hide, freeze, um, cells, rows, and columns. We're also going to format those cells. We're going to autofill those cells. We're going to do conditional formatting. Um, we're going to look at the difference between sorting and filtering. And we're going to also um, use the sum and averages of formulas. Okay, So um, simple formulas. I'm not like going to say that I am a pro at Google Sheets by any means. But hopefully some of these little tips and tricks that you're learning may help you as you go along. So um, our success criteria today is going to just be knowing that we're successful when we can use these basic functions to support your needs. All right. So the first thing I want to do is um, show you how to get to Google Sheets. So if I go to csdocs.org, there's two ways that I can get into Google Sheets. Um, one is if I come here to New and I click on it, right down here is Sheets. But if I hover over the top of it, Notice that I can do a blank sheet here, or there's a way to do it from a template. And the templates, there are Canyons District ones. So if there's like ones that uh, maybe your department likes to use often, and they're not anything that are like secret or anything like that, you could throw it into the template gallery and, sub and submit a template here. And that way you guys can continue to share them, and all of you guys could just come in here to get that template whenever you need. Okay. Um, notice that there's not really, there's only one in here right now, and I think that one was created by the ed techs a while ago to test things out. Under general, notice that there are a ton of other templates. So even if you're deciding to use this for personal or different things like that, notice that there's like monthly budgets. There's the calendars in here on 2020, not 2021. So if you need to go backwards, I guess, I don't know. Financial statement, time sheets, different things like that. You can find those in this template gallery. And like I said, you can always decide that, that you have templates that you want to use often and submit those. And so they're always here that anyone in your department could use. Hey, I'm gonna go. I have a question. Yeah. Is it just me or I am just seeing like the Google Meet on your screen? Is there supposed to be something else on the screen? Yes. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> That's OK. I, I was thinking it was maybe just me. <laughs> Let me try again. OK, now, now I see your template yeah. gallery. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to kind of start here again. So right here, um, like I said, if we go into our CSD docs is where we click on new. We hover over that Google Sheets. That's where I can see that blank spreadsheet, and that's just creating a new spreadsheet or that template. So when I go into that templates, this is where you can go in and submit a template that you could use with that department. Okay, so I could come here, and when I click on it, you're going to select the spreadsheet that you want to, and then basically it's going to go to um, some of the ed techs in the, in the ISD department where they can approve it and then it will show up here. And then you can just have people go into that template gallery. And right here under general is where you can see other templates that have been created by Google or by different companies that um, they think are important. So those are those. All right, so once you create a new one, so I'm just gonna come here again and I'm gonna go to my Google Sheets and create a new one. I'm going to create it this time from a, bl a blank one. I just want a regular one that I can use. So from here, up here, it's really easy to just give it a name. So I can do practice. And then I can come here and I can start filling in my spreadsheet. And I know you guys know how to type in a cell. But I'm going to show you a few tricks that I like to use. So for example, if I need to do um, like a calendar or something, and I need to start typing in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Typing in all of those can take a while. But what you can do is come down to this bottom corner right here, to that little um, square. And let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger so you guys aren't trying to like 
strain your eyes is bad. But I can come here to this little square, and when that plus sign shows up, I can click and drag along, and now all of a sudden it's doing autofill for me. So that's a really nice tool to use, so, and it's going to save you a bunch of time. Another one uh, is great is when you're using numbers. If I need the same number to go across the screen all the way from Monday to Sunday, I could say that I put in my one, and then I can drag it, and now all of a sudden it's auto-filling one. But we know with like a, a calendar, if we're trying to build our own calendar or whatever, that one isn't going all the way across. So another option that we could do is we could start typing in one and two, then highlight over it, take this and pull it out, and now it's auto-filling in sequential. So that's kind of a nice tool for us to use. Okay, um, once we've done that and I start having more numbers here, I can also come here and um, come like um, A2 and A3, highlight that and bring that down, and it's gonna autofill. If I do one and two, it will autofill. If I do one, two, and, or one and three, notice how my autofill now changes. So now it's going by odd numbers. One and four, it thinks it's counting by threes. So when I autofill that, it's now bringing it up to a different thing. So that's kind of a nice, nice feature to be able to use as well. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about um, is coming here. And I realized that I put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but maybe I needed a title. Maybe I need it to be a month. So instead of trying to um, delete and bring down, I can easily come over to my my row one and do like a two finger click. And now I'm able to insert above. And now I can say that this is January. But notice it's staying over here on the left. So what I can do instead is come here, drag across, and I can use this merge tool right here, and it's gonna merge my cells. So now I've got my cells merged. So this is um, from A to G is technically all one cell in that row. And I can come here now and I can center that to where I want it to be. Okay, maybe I want my row one to be a little bit bigger than the rest of the rows because it's more important. So I can come here and do a size and change that size and it will kind of auto fill it but maybe I want it to be a certain size I can come on one and click and drag down and now it's going to change it to whatever size I want it to be and if I want this centered not only um, right to left like horizontally I can come up here and because my screen is bigger right now I'm not as much as showing up so those three dots are going to give me more options. But when I come to those three dots, here is my vertical alignment. So now I can um, come, make sure it's highlighted, and I can vertically, vertically align it. So now it's where I want it to be on the page versus it being down too low. Or if I want it to be at the very top, I can throw that alignment to the top. Okay. Um, if I decide that all of these cells, I want them to be a certain width or length, height, I guess, height, I can come from row two to six, and I can click and drag down it. And now, on any of them, it doesn't matter. I'm going to wait for that little blue to show up, and, and then find the arrow and drag it down. And it's going to make all of those the same width and height. If I decide I need it smaller again, I can always do that same thing and bring it down. Notice, though, only the, the ones that you have selected are the ones that are getting bigger or smaller. So I'm going to bring that back down to normal size. The same thing can happen if you are doing it on A, let's say, A through D. I can just find it and move it to whatever size I want it to go and make it the size I want it versus the size that that standard is. 
Okay, does anyone have any questions up till now? Okay, um, something else that I really like is the feature. So maybe I need all of the cells to do something. Okay, maybe I want to change all of the cells to be a certain text. I can do a command A, and that's going to highlight everything that I have used so far. But basically, notice that I haven't used anything in cell A12 yet, so it's not going to do anything in that. So even if I like change the size of it, it's not going to change it, or it usually doesn't change it, in cells that are, are not in my, my realm that I've already been using. But one way to fix that is by going to click up here where that FX is right underneath it. I can click and now notice that it is highlighting everything in my entire sheet. So now if I change the font or if I change the size of it, it's going to allow it to change it for the entire sheet. So I'm not having to focus or having to change it every time I make any sort of change or add a new row or a new column or different things like that. Um, other things, if I want to add a column, I could do a, so if I want to add one after G or after F, I could do a two finger click on that column and I can insert to the left or the right. If I said I inserted it to the left and I actually wanted to insert it to the right, instead of having to go and delete it and re-add it, one thing that I could do is just hover over it wait for the hand to show up, and now I can drag it. Um, oh, it's because it's merged. Let me unmerge this really quickly. Okay, so now I can drag it to the other side where I actually wanted it to go. Okay, um, another thing that um, I wanted to show you guys is the difference between um, clearing and deleting. So, Clearing um, basically means that if I have something, for example, this Sunday, and I want it to go away, I can come here and I can click on the delete. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to delete or it's going to clear that, that cell. But if I actually want to delete everything, okay, um, so for example, I wanted to delete um, Friday 1 and 5 and everything else that's in there, if I come up and do a two-finger click here, I can, um, if I want everything gone but I want the column still there, I can clear that column. But if I decide I don't want that column anymore, I want, I can come here and delete the column and then it's going to shift everything over for me. Um, any questions so far? So we talked about inserting and deleting those columns. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you guys is I can come and I can um, I can come here. I'm gonna just delete this so it's not there. Okay. And if I want to use start using simple formulas, maybe. Um, I wanted to talk about like absences or different things like that or people showing up. I can come here and and add up how many I have in that column. So if I do the equal sign, then notice that there's a little um, bracket that shows up that's going to have me start typing. As soon as I start typing, for example, that S, notice a ton of different formulas start showing up for me. And... I can hover over them and it will kind of tell me what they mean. Okay, but if I start typing and I want, for example, the sum of that row, row three, I can start typing it in. So I'm going to say I want the sum. And when I put a parenthesis there, now it's asking me the question of what do I want that sum to be? So now I can say I want the sum to be three or A3 through. D3. And so when I click and drag there, now I can finish what I want it to be. So I have equal the sum of parentheses, what I want the sum of, and that parentheses, 
And when I hit the return key, it's automatically going to fill in my four. So what ends up happening is if I, for example, change this to a three, I don't have to go in and retype this. It automatically is going to change my answer to what I want it to be. Now, for this one, I did adding all the way across. So I would assume that I want to add all of these all the way across. Instead of having to type in that formula every time, I'm going to use that um, square at the bottom again and just drag that down. And now all of a sudden, it is auto-summing any of those. So anything that I make a change to, it's going to automatically um, do my sum for me there, which is super nice because then I don't have to worry about Every, like making corrections every time because it's automatically doing it for me. Another one that I really like is averages. So I talked about absences earlier. Maybe I want to see the amount of absences that sh have showed up on Tuesdays. So what I could do instead is come here and I could say the average, and I can click here, and notice it even says average suggested based on the data. And it actually is already uh, like assuming what I want to do. And it's auto filling for me. Okay, but I could type it in as well. And then I can hit the return key. And my average of Tuesday is actually five. So if I wanted to see what Wednesday and Thursday looked like, I could do that as well. Now, notice that it has 10.6666666 and it keeps going. Maybe I don't want it to look like that. What I could do is come here and decrease that decimal place. So that decimal place, I can bring it down, down, down. So now, maybe I want it to be a whole number or maybe I want it to be to the hundredths place. And so now it is finding out my average of those to the nearest hundredth. Another thing that I can do is I can sort. So for example, if I look, I'm going to delete um, these two just to make it a little bit easier. You can do it a different way too. I'm just going to delete those two rows just for a second so that you can see it easily. But notice I have here Three, um, four, seven, ten, sixteen. Those are already in order. But what if I change this one to a two and this one to a five? Okay, now they're not in order anymore. So what I could do is I could come and highlight over it, and I can do a. Um, I should be able to do a right click. I click on D. Okay. Uh, when I clicked on D, then I can say that I want to sort this sheet from A to Z. And now it's going to um, organize those for me. And it did kind of mess up my average. But I could always come and refinish my average to what I wanted it to be. And this is equals average of my D1 through 9. And so now it put it in the order that I wanted it to go in. And notice that it auto-corrected it. So when it sorted it, it if um, my 2 was down below, it automatically pulled it into the order of the rest of them. So A, followed, A B, and C followed what I did for my sort of D. Another thing that I can do is I can um, come and I can set a condition. So maybe I want all of this stuff to do something like turn red or turn green depending on what's happening to it. So I can highlight that information and I can scroll all the way down and right here is my conditional formatting. So when I use my conditional formatting, it's saying that it's going to apply it to what I highlighted, which was A1 
through E9. So now, when I look at my format rules, it's saying if, and I can decide what I want it to be, since mine are numbers, I'm going to choose if it's greater than, I want it, so I'm going to say if it's greater than, and I'm going to say if it's greater than 10, I want it to turn red. Because maybe I don't want absences more than 10. So if I have that, okay, um, I'm going to turn it red. If it's less than or equal to, which means that it will be anything 9 or less. Oops. Let me go back to my greater than. Greater than 10, it's going to turn red. So now I'm going to click on done. So anything that was greater than 10 now turned red. So now what I could do for the rest of it is add another rule. If it is less than or equal to 9, so I have my 1 through 9 and my 10 and above, it's less than or equal to 9, now I can say that I want those to be actually, yeah, green. So now I have it. Notice that because of the way I did it, my formula, I did not say anything that was equal to 10. So now notice that those two are not doing it. But I could always come here and I could change that rule to say if it's greater than or equal to 10, which would put that into that red category. So now it's doing color based based on what I assigned it to do. Okay, um, does anyone have questions up until now? I'm going to look at the chat really quickly just to see if I've got any questions. Okay, I don't see any questions yet. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to look back and kind of see. I said um, merge, add, delete. Oh, hide and freeze frames. I love this feature. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to insert my Monday through um friday okay so now i have my monday through friday oh here's a cool trick so wednesday notice wednesday isn't filled all the way it's not showing all the way if i come between c and d right here where that blue is and i do a double click it's going to auto um correct the size of it and it's going to make it fit the size that i need it to be so just another quick tip all right, so um, freezing frames is a really cool feature that you can do. Um, the reason why you'd want to freeze frames is maybe you have um, schools to the left. Um, now, Jordan, etc. Okay, um, and I'm just going to pull those down so we have something there. So now what I can do is I have my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But as I start scrolling, notice that Monday through Friday disappear. So as I'm starting to look at stuff down here, I'm like, is that a Tuesday? Is that a Wednesday? I'm getting confused. I can't tell. Okay. But if I come here to my one and I click on view, now I can come to freeze and I can freeze my first row. And notice you can freeze up to two rows, actually. But I can freeze that first row. So as I start scrolling down, it stays put. So I can see that on at Edgemont, on Wednesday, they had a total of nine. Okay, You can do that same thing by going and clicking on your A to freeze your um, columns. So I can go View. And I can freeze that, and I can say that I'm going to freeze my first column. So now, when I move over to the right, if I'm like trying to write thing, something down or trying to get data really quickly, I can just freeze both of those frames. So Friday at Edgemont, I had 20. So I can just really see it really easily. Um, another thing that you can do is maybe I wanted to compare Tuesday and Thursday, but I have Wednesday that is kind of in the middle there, I could come here and I could say that I'm going to hide the column. It's not getting rid of it. It's just hiding it for now. So I don't have to try to 
go back and forth. Um, notice that right here, when I did that, the two arrows showed up so I could um, bring that back to where it needs to be by just clicking on it really easily. Uh, anyone have questions with any of that so far? Okay, I talked about sorting. Um, one thing I wanted to show you guys, and this is going to be more of the advanced, um, is starting to look at filters. So when I'm looking at filters, maybe over here I have my Edgemont and Mount Jordan. I might have other ones too. Um, so for example, I'm working on my doctorate right now and we have our, our categories that we're looking at. And I have over a hundred categories that I'm looking at at any one given time. So if I need to focus in on just one or two of those categories, I can come up here. I'm actually gonna put, um, change a couple of these names. Um, So I have, now I have Edgemont, Mount Jordan, I have Alta, and I have Willow Springs in here. If I wanted to, okay, instead of trying to say um, hiding, so hide Mount Jordan, I can come up here to my um, A column, and I can come right here to my filter. So this filter, um, I can turn this filter on. And now notice it's kind of changing the look of what my um form looks like but when i come here now i'm saying that i'm going to filter and it's asking me it's showing me everything that is available in that column so what i could do is clear and say i only want to look at alta and willow springs right now and i could say okay and now only alta and willow springs are showing up so now i'm able to look at just that information i can also come back here and I can say that I don't want Willow Springs anymore, or maybe I want to look at just Edgemont. So the other three of them are gone. I could come here and I can see only my Edgemont is being looked at right now. Um, any questions with that piece? When I want to get out of that because Maybe I don't want that filter on at all times. I want to make sure that I click on select all, which brings them all back up for me. So I can click on OK. And then I can easily just exit out of that filter. And it will go away and bring me back to where I was before. OK. Um, another thing that, that's kind of nice is um, down here under sheets, I have the ability to duplicate the sheet I'm in. So maybe I need my original sheet, but then I want to start making changes to it without affecting the original. I can come down here and I can duplicate that sheet. And now I can change, maybe I need to change these um, numbers here to something else or whatever. My original sheet's here, my duplicate sheet is here. And what I can do is I can always come here and change the color which is going to put a color on the bottom so I can help keep track of which sheet is which. So that's kind of a nice feature. Um, another option is maybe I have a ton of sheets on the bottom down here. One thing that I could do is if I only want to have people looking at a certain sheet, but I don't want to get rid of the rest of them, I can always say that I want to hide that sheet. And if I come to um, my little lines right here, my all sheets, I'll be able to see all of the sheets available to me. But when I'm looking down here at my tabs, only that one sheet is going to be showing for me. Um, any questions? Okay, let's see what I, I've... Sorry, I couldn't find my mute button. I have a question. This is Shonda. Okay. When when you said that, um, you know, the sheets could be hidden from other people, when when they get the document, do they see the button and see that there are sheets hidden from them, or do they only see what is visible? 
they will still be able to see all of it. So if they clicked on that button, they would be able to see that there's 15 sheets there. So it's not like you're you're deleting that information from them or anything like that. It's just that it's not visible until they click on it. And right now, I bet 90% of our district doesn't even know that, that button exists. So so it's it's only hidden from them until but they can make it seen again. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, so it's not like that it disappears for anybody else. It's just that it's hidden from them until they turned it back on. Okay. Yeah. Um, what other questions do we have? I talked about um, adding, merging, hiding, freezing. I talked about format, um, formatting cells. I talked about the autofill and correctional formatting. I talked about the filter and the sorting, and I talked about um, simple formulas. So I, I went through everything on my list. So does anyone have anything else that they would like me to cover or explain? Okay, I'm gonna show you one more thing though, then, and that is going to be um, the charts, because I know a lot of people um, use sheets or Excel for that matter because they um, enjoy the images or the charts that they can get from it. So um, one thing that you can do with this is you can create a chart. So when I come and I just click on the chart, it will automatically pull up um, a chart that it thinks is good for me. And if I don't like it, I can simply delete it. But what I can do is I can come and I can um, choose the information that I want on that chart. So maybe I want it to be, oops. I can say that I want it to be um, by Monday through here. And then, let's see. And then I can insert a chart. It's going to pull it up. Um, it thinks because I didn't highlight Monday through Friday, whatever, that it's the title of it. And then basically what it does is for Edgemont, it is now taking um, those days and it is um, putting them on that chart for me. Over on the right-hand side, I can say, yeah, I don't like that chart. Maybe I want it to be a different type of chart. Maybe I wanted it to be um, a it, like a different type of bar chart. So now notice that it is pulling those in for me. I can also come over and there's so many different things that I can do. If I click into the three dots right here, I can now download the chart if I need to. I can delete the chart if I need to. Um, I can copy it, etc. I can also come here and decide I don't want it. Um, right now it's not stacking or maybe I do want it stacking. I can change that. I can come down here and maybe it made my chart the opposite way that I wanted. I could switch those rows and columns. So here's the Monday through Friday, and here's my three different schools. So it just did the opposite for me. Or I can customize it even further um, by choosing colors that I want to, um, add extra titles to it. I can come down here and um, explain further what I want the um, horizontal access to look like by setting up those access lines, I can, when I set up those access lines, I can say that I want the minimum to, or the maximum to be 50. And then notice that down here, it changed the chart size to be more what I wanted it to look like. Um, so it's a way to like skew your data to how you want it to look. Um, you can use your access or your vertical access. You can change those. Maybe you want to change colors of it. You can do that here. Um, so maybe I want it to be more blue. Now it's changing my colors to blue. So if you have like a certain paper, or certain color scheme that you need it to follow, you can do that here. Um, when you're using things like Google Docs and you need the formula or you need a chart to go into it, basically what you'll do in your Google Docs, let me see if I can just pull up a Google Doc really quickly. Um, 
when you're pull, using your docs and you need to now insert a chart from that, now I can say that I'm pulling it from sheets and it will ask me where I want to pull it from. So here's that practice one that I just did. And now here's my chart and I can click on that and import that straight into my Google Docs. And the cool part about it is when I click on it, it shows that it's linked. So basically what happens is if I make a change on this sheet right here, on my Google Doc, what's gonna happen is it will tell me, it should auto update it for me. And if it doesn't, it will say, would you like to auto update this? or it's been auto update, would you like to add changes to it? So that's a great way that if you're using what you're already using in Excel, will just transfer over without having to download it or without having to do any of that. And it just auto updates for you, which is super nice. Okay, so that was my one added quick trick for you. Um, do you guys have any questions, anything that I can help you with? Anything that you're like, I wish I would have got that and I did not get that from this training. I'm going to stop sharing so I can come back to you guys more. I, I appreciate learning kind of all of the, the shortcuts for the cells and all of that. Awesome. Thanks. Anyone else have anything that they'd like to add? Okay, well, I really, really appreciate that um, you guys took the time to be in on this meeting today. Um, next week is going to be Google Docs, and I plan on doing kind of the same sort of thing. Um, I know that um, Rachel Blackburn just emailed me and kind of asked me what I would be covering for next week. And I kind of responded to her that I was going to talk about like voice typing, the explore feature, um, the difference between editing, suggesting, and viewing mode, our version history, um, talking about table of contents versus document outlines and bookmarks. Uh, I was going to talk about like the paint tool, um, which is a formatting tool, um, bringing those charts like we just talked about into our documents, and find and replace features and more. So if that's those are things that are going to interest you, please go ahead and join me next week. Or if you're like, Chandra, I've been wanting to know about this, just shoot me an email and I will make sure that I get it into the presentation. But I really, really appreciate that you guys all took the time to come today. Um, if you have any questions, I will stay on for the next little while and you're free to ask. But thank you for coming. Thank you.